25 years ago today, North America was introduced to two little games that would change the landscape of not just video games, but popular culture forever. Pokemon Red and Blue. These two adventures would find their ways into the hearts of millions of children, letting them explore a whole Pokemon world filled with discovery, challenges, and a shocking amount of basic mathematical principles that the games could barely support without doubling over on themselves. And with these adventures came two Pokemon trainers, two headliners of this experience that players would subtly carry with them forever. One was a budding youth of infinite potential, willing to experience the world, catch them all, and become the very best with a true love for Pokémon as their only motivation. That was you, Pokémon Trainer Red. The other... Ah, what was his name again? That's right, I remember now. His name is Blue. Show me what you got! Pokémon Trainer Blue is probably the most perfect rival in video games. That's not to say he's the deepest, or the most perfect parallel, or even the de facto best rival in the Pokémon series. But in terms of embodying the idea of a rivalry, Blue is pretty stellar. Pokémon isn't a complicated game story-wise. It doesn't have an amazing hook past its advertising tagline, it's a weird RPG that more closely follows a sports story rather than some epic quest. But every step of the way, Blue is there to egg you on to greatness, with his constant attempts to put you in your place in a way that is incredibly well-considered, insanely memorable, and, maybe most importantly for his legacy, leaves him in a place to evolve and grow past his simple purpose to antagonize. A world of adventure with Pokémon awaits. Let's go! Let's do it! <laughs> Blue's antagonism starts simple. You're told that you've been competing ever since you were babies, you're setting off on your journeys to become a Pokémon master at the same time, and when given the choice of three Pokémon, his grandpa lets you pick first. So, like a jealous child, he swoops in to pick whichever one is naturally strong against your Pokémon of choice. This is the name of the game for Blue. Constant one-upsmanship. He'll mock you for trying to go to the Pokémon League when you don't even have a single badge. Tells his sister to not let you have a town map when he accepts the Pokédex quest from his grandpa has beaten every gym just before you, his name always engraved one place higher than yours in every institution, Keep on trying. has collected 40 species of Pokémon by the time you reach the SSN, which, considering you can only get 47 species before then and some of those are evolutions, yeah, that's a flex. Blue takes both of the core conceits of the original Pokémon games, catching them all, and being the very best, and challenges you on both fronts, constantly. And the most annoying thing is... He's good at it. Too good for you? <laughs> I knew it. Blue has fought up to eight times throughout a playthrough of a Gen 1 Pokémon game, the most of any individual rival until Hop in Gen 8. And he makes every single one of them memorable. Not just through gameplay, mind you. Blue is a master of ambush tactics, lurking in areas of both total safety and in the middle of dungeons to kick your teeth in. Just wanting to go west, check out the Pokémon League, or toward this cool bridge in Cerulean? Enjoying a party on a cruise ship? Trying to be courteous of everyone mourning around you as you respect the souls of the dead. You come to him this time! It's okay, he'll wait! In the middle of trying to solve a terrorist coup, dozens of hostages all over the building, 
Your Pokemon probably worn out from a long dungeon. Who cares? He knew you'd be here and he's ready to fight. Oh, look up to Kuroko. Blue is as ridiculous as he is punishing. Single-mindedly obsessed with becoming the best and defeating you to prove it. And every time, he is more than willing to bring his A-game. His first fight might just be two kids yelling at their weird dogs to hit each other until one falls down. But by his second fight, he's well overleveled his Pidgey and Starter combo, easily outclassing everything nearby until you hit the first gym. Then on Nugget Bridge, he sends out his Pidgeotto, the first evolved Pokémon the player has faced outside of some Metapod, Kakuna, and this one Raticate that a random Team Rocket Grunt has. And for once in its life, due to a very limited level curve, Pidgeotto can actually deal some damage and act as a real threat here, especially on solo challenges or if you only trained your starter, as it loves leading with the accuracy-destroying sand attack. But the rest of his team is unevolved and kinda wimpy, something that he easily corrects on the St. Anne, tossing out fast attackers in Kadabra and Raticate to mess you up with. His showdown in Pokémon Tower sees him using more exotic mons, adding an Execute and Growlithe to his team, along with... Well, holy crap, that thing's a step up! Blue's Gyarados likely being the first time the player encounters the atrocious Pokémon, and have to deal with its overwhelming might. By the time the player has a showdown with him in Silphco, Blue has really taken his team to the next level, fully evolving his three oldest team members. His Pidgeot, his Starter, and his Alakazam. Alakazam! That last one, an especially scary powerhouse of a Pokemon. Proof that he had friends to trade with and is more popular than a geek like you. And one of the major reasons that the Psychic type is fairly universally remembered as OP in Generation 1. Mutant Catboys notwithstanding. And that is the thing that makes Blue such an effective rival. He is constantly learning and adapting. It takes until your seventh fight with Blue, a parallel to your second on Route 22, for him to finally settle on a team of six. And he doesn't even have all his Pokémon fully evolved by this point either. He's just like you, still training, still refining his strategies, figuring out what works and what doesn't, when Pokémon evolve and what he has to do to push them. Blue is a character that matures alongside you, his sprite even changing and aging as the adventure goes on, as you both learn more about the world of Pokémon. And every time, you always rise to the challenge and beat him back. That is, before he nabs the greatest prize he can from you. Blue succeeds at becoming a Pokémon Master, beating the Elite Four before you, and just as you think you managed to beat the final boss, burning whatever resources you have, there he is for one final ambush. And Blue's ultimate squad is an absolutely beautiful mix of effectiveness and pettiness. Ride on. The Pokémon with the highest physical attack and defense combo in the game. Alakazam, a masterful sweeper with blazing speed and debilitating special. Pidgeot, a Pokémon that the player is very likely to have carried with them through the whole game, trying to show them up with an overleveled bird. Exeggutor, the most popular Pokémon internally at Game Freak at the time, with some really favorable stats to boot. Gyarados, an offensive monster needing no introduction. Arcanine. The self-proclaimed legendary Pokémon with the stats to keep up with those legends. And one of those three last ones being swapped out for his starter, perfectly poised to take down your ringer. Blastoise! 
This is Blue's true potential. He started just like you. A dumb kid who only knew how to growl, tackle, and scratch with his little reptile of choice. But now, he's a true scholar of the Pokémon world. He's found the most powerful species of Pokémon there are, constructed a team of varied types to handle any challenge. He is a Pokémon master. The greatest Pokémon trainer in the world? That is me! But that's not the whole story of Pokémon. In focusing so much on the destination, reaching his goals, beating you, Blue's failed to enjoy the journey. But you? You rid the region of Team Rocket, and even helped reform its boss through your love of battling. You satisfied the restless spirit of Cubone's mother. You uncovered the secrets of the Pokémon Mansion, sailed through the Seafoam Islands, maybe even met Pokémon thought only to be legends. You enjoyed your time in this Pokémon world, and whether you came to the same conclusion as Blue and have a team of statistical juggernauts or your own squad of weirdos, you chose and raised your Pokémon with care because you liked them. On paper, Blue should wipe the floor with you. But in practice, you probably found TMs and have much better move pools than him. I mean, look at this. Executor doesn't even have four moves. <laughs> Rhydon's main attack is Fury Attack. Very bad! Arcanine knows Ember. <laughs> Look, I, I know trainers only use natural movesets on their Pokémon in red and blue, except for gym leader TMs. But Blue could have made an exception, or at least not wasted his one TM teaching Venusaur a third grass move. D regardless of Gen 1 quirks, Blue remains the most dangerous trainer in the region, keeping the title of Pokémon Master from you every step of the way. And at the end of the road, you get to take the crown from him. Through determination and consideration, you get to knock him down when he's been trying to do the same to you for hours on end. Blue's been a motivator all game, keeping you ready at any moment for him to jump out and challenge you to a difficult battle. Well, you know, difficult by early Pokemon standards at least. He pushed you so he could become the very best. And that is exactly what you became. The culmination of your journey being the end of his. And that is an ending that tastes oh so sweet. Congratulations, you won! But Blue isn't limited to just a single story. While he primarily serves a great mechanical purpose for red, green, and blue, later appearances both add to his crafty contrasting ways or continue his story. Pokémon Yellow shows a different variant of dickishness, blue nabbing the Eevee meant to be the player's starting Pokémon and leaving them with just a freshly caught Pikachu. Blue will then evolve his Eevee based on his early encounters with the player choosing Vaporeon if he senses no threat from Pikachu and wipes it out in the first fight, Flareon if Pikachu goes one for one with him in the first two encounters, or Jolteon if Pikachu really impresses him by winning twice in a row, wanting to get a speedy electric type for himself and show you what for. Blue also develops a more stall-based strategy here, with defensive powerhouses like Cloister and Sand Slash, and oodles of status moves. It's very annoying. Big step up from whatever the hell Rhydon was trying to do. Cloister. Pokemon Gold and Silver follow Blue after his defeat, showing him still wandering the Kanto region to learn all he can, but having changed with time. He's accepted his role as Viridian City's gym leader. Not the best anymore, but still about as close to it as you're gonna get. Willing to use his skills to test and train a new generation. As long as they can give him a bit of a challenge, at least. <laughs> Heart Gold and Soul Silver push this even further by making his Pidgeot, 
the Pokemon other than his old starter that he's held on to the longest, being the highest level Pokemon in the whole Kanto region, and knowing Return. A move that increases in power the deeper the bond between the player and their Pokemon is. Seems he learned to treat his team with love and care after all. There are, of course, more examples of Blue's growth. Let's Go shows him directly mentor the new generation, Blue having long since defeated the Elite Four and helping the player and Trace on their Pokedex quest in a really relaxed and aloof way. Ultra Sun and Moon have him hang out with his buddy Red, forming a tag team with his former rival to take on challengers. He's commonly shown with an Aerodactyl, an ill-tempered beast that Pokemon Masters reveals he didn't have the right attitude to tame back in his heyday as champ, but has become one of his most stalwart companions in the years since. But all of these pieces and more combine to show one important thing. The beauty of rivalry. Rivals are often seen in an explicitly negative light. Antagonists that hound a hero and need to be overcome to complete their rise to glory and arc. Blue definitely starts as one of those, utterly obnoxious in his relentless quest to be the best at your expense. But that just pushes you to be your best in turn. You need to learn all there is about this weird RPG called Pokémon in order to defeat Blue. And once you do overcome him, he learns all the important lessons that you have to teach. He grows, focuses on exploring the world, nurturing his favorites, looking for that run back, but not chasing it as his only desire anymore. You've both grown from this little competition, and are all the better for it. And I know I'm ascribing a lot to Mr. Smell you Later here. It's Pokémon, and not even one of the ones with familial trauma or whatever. But inspiring each other to be the best is a simple story, and seeing Blue embody it so thoroughly, all of the good that a contest of wills and skills can bring out, Man, that is a core feeling that any other story can only hope to take from and evolve. That is how you design for rivalry. Keep on trying! I, I know, we did rivalry with K. Rule, but like, come on! Nothing fits this guy better, okay? <laughs>